okay and uh, the time is coming already good morning everyone good morning good morning professor mia coming uh, and Morning. thank you for joining our our guest lecture this morning so i would like to share um, our agenda today um this program will be this, uh, this program will be a uh, start with registering participant until time now 9 15 and then opening speech by mr Bertels, and then presentation by professor mia continue with q a and for all the participants who have questions please use chat room for the questions and we will we will share and we will have a question and answer after presentation. And after that, we have a closing speech. For the, all of the participants, please turn on your camera and use virtual background that we already shared. Thank you. And for the first agenda, uh, we serve with those. Uh, would you have opening speech now? Time is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. David Kusuma, as the moderator of today's event. Uh, thank you to all particip participants for being here with us today. Before we get started, I would like to express my sense of appreciation to all the committee and particip particip participants who generously helped us make this event come together to become a success. Prof. Mia and all lecturer in Department of Civil Engineering, we could have done without you. In today's webinar, Prof. Mia will talk about the press inspection and chemistry survey of press during Kumamoto earthquake. This topic is essential for us to the characteristic of Indonesia, which is prone to earthquake disaster. I hope we can learn from Prof. Mia speaks very well. I don't want to make too much of your time. I need to leave some time for the moderator to introduce the guest lecturer to all of you. So thank you very much for listening and welcome in the international guest lecturer in collaboration between Institute Technology Aditama Surabaya and Mandalay Technical University, Myanmar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Mr. Fidelis, for your opening speech. I would like to share the, the short profile of the Professor Mia. She is a, uh, the Doctor of Philosophy of Civil Engineering in Mandalay Technical University in Myanmar and continue to pursue postgraduate diploma in remote sensing and GIS in India. And she has uh, been active as associate professor since 20, uh, 2009 until 2017 and also has some international uh, international experience in Switzerland, especially in SICA service and company as a structural strengthening and construction chemical project show. And Professor Mia is great because she has a doctor of philosophy degree for twice in 2018 in civil engineering in Kumamoto University, Japan. And recently, she is a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Mandalay Technological University in Myanmar. Well, uh, that will show the introduction to Professor Mia. And uh, are you ready for presenting your material? Thank you, 
you, Kusma, for your next introduction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, Professor Mia, you could uh, begin the presentation. That is okay, yours. Okay, thank you. I will start sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, you're the green your screen. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. First, first of all, I'd like to express my special thanks to Dr. Auladi for inviting me and arranging this program and all the people who support for the next event. And thank you all participants for making a part to be here with us today. I wish you all Minglawa, which is the formal greeting in our language. So I like to start my presentation now. The title is Bridge Inspection and Damage Survey of Bridges During Kumamoto Earthquake. Let me start my presentation. Uh, in this presentation, I will divide two main portions. The first one is bridge inspection, which is the uh, in, in this portion, I will present the theory background for the bridge inspectors and engineer that will include what are the basic re responsibility of bridge inspectors and engineers, what are the primary inspection types and what are the duties of the inspection team. After that, I will move Move to the damage survey of 2016 Kumamoto earthquake, especially on bridge. Uh, I am sure you still remember the experience of that earthquake in Kumamoto. Yes. yes. Sure, sure. <laughs> of course. So, due to this earthquake, we met difficulties, but for me, fortunately, Fortunately, I can learn a lot from this Kumamoto earthquake. So I will present the dummy survey of Bridgex during this earthquake with my experience. Now I will move to the first portion of bridge inspection. So during my presentation, uh, you will see some bridge photo from our country. It's just to show off our country sensory with my favorite bridges. So here you can see a long and large spike cap. It's called a spike cap. So actually it's what during uh, British colony uh, and it was the highest bridge in our country and uh, the longest with tracks at that time, but not now. So before I talk about the procedure for brick inspection, I'd like to present what are the basic responsibility for bridge inspector and engineers. So the primary responsibility is to maintain public safety and confidence. So I'm sure all of you have been traveling around at least within the city and cross the bridge It's sure. So as you know, we can cross the bridge in normal condition without hesitation, like in this situation, but under same condition, let's see this photo. Like the bridge condition like that, you won't dare to cross the bridge. You will not have confidence the bridge is safe for you. So it is important for bridge engineer to maintain public safety and confidence. The second one is to protect public investment. As far as I know, most of the bridge 
are constructing constructed using the government budgets x mean x our public investment so it's our responsibility also to protect our public investment so we have to take care of it even an uncut for minor problem which can be corrected before they lead to costly major repairs if we didn't know the minor problems and leave it and lead to severe damage it sometimes it may lead to the fill of the whole bridge so to fulfill this second responsibility bridge inspection program support x needed to provide so what are this program we cannot know the minor problem which can lead to major one another one is to maintain accurate bridge record if we only inspect the bridge and even if we find out some problem and didn't maintain the record for that inspection it is not useless also we have to keep the record for further investigation inspection and uh, the retrofit plan etc so all this bridge document and the bridge inspection rep report are legal document so we need to fulfill the legal responsibility also so x x legal and x important for the further inspection and the safety of the bridge the bridge re report should be accurate and detailed so for example we have to write every detail findings about our inspection we cannot just write the bridge is in danger rex it is not safe to use x too general and x not enough for the report so in this slide you can see the good and bad description for report writing so this figure is the open bridge so it's is it the city at the city recently i live in so it's one of the historic bridge also so now i will move to the primary inspection types there are primary inspection type as shown in this figure uh, and each of each inspection type will be explained in the following slides so this is the pakoku bridge this is uh, the longest river crossing bridge in our country The first one of the inspection type X, initial inspection. This type of inspection X, very fast inspection of the bridge with fully documented investigation. So the bridge inspector and engineer have to call it on necessary document before starting the inspection. And it, uh, it provides all structural inventory and price data and it will determine baseline structural condition. So this type of inspection is necessary for all inspection procedure. So the second one is routine inspection. It's the regular schedule inspection and consists of observation or measurements or both observations and measurements this type of inspection will determine both physical and functional condition of the bridge and identify any changes from initial initial x mean the primary inspection or previously record condition that's why it is important to maintain the risk inspection record 
it will ensure to set defined present service requirement of the bridge and based on all these findings, the bridge inspector has to make the recommendation for maintenance or uh, next time scheduling of inspection. Hand on inspection is the inspection within M length of components. We were inspect the component within the reach of our M length. Uh, it used visual techniques with supplemented by non descriptive texting. Another one is damage inspection. It's damage inspection, so it's sure it's not a check you when X and N check you. This type of inspection where a set structural damage due to environmental factors such as earthquake or cyclone or human action like bone flexing or accident. So it will determine what actions are needed and plan the retrofit, retrofitting of something as the triax necessary center. Uh, we may need to restrict load. Example, uh, the load capacity of the bridge has reduced and we have to limit it from 50 tanks to 30 tanks as the try and center. It need to maintain and repair and close the whole bridge and sometimes we need to close them links for the maintenance and repair process. Number five is in-depth inspection. It's a closed inspection and one or more members are needed for that type of inspection. In this inspection, the inspector will identify any deficiency which are not readily detectable using routine inspection. Some, in some plagues, hand-on inspection may be necessary and for some plagues, non destructive examination or other material text may be necessary. The next one is fracture critical inspection. This type of inspection use visual and other non disruptive examination methods. Uh, in this type of inspection, fracture critical member were identified, especially which can lead to portion of the whole bridge failure. So it is important and uh, necessary to be very detailed close visual hand-on inspection and cleaning and non destructive examination is also needed for the type of inspection. So for the inspection of bridge, it is needless, needless to say and the water inspection will be included. So in this type of inspection and the water portion of bridge structure Bridge step structure and as well as surrounding channel that cannot be inspected visually will be included. So it requires diving or other appropriate technique to inspect underwater. Uh, this type of inspection where conducted score evaluation and determine the extent of score and severity of score. The last one is special inspection. This is the check you one at the discretion of bridge owner. So, and it will inspect the inspect and monitor a particular known or suspected deficiency. For example, uh, the foundation settlement of fetish in bridge. So, uh, in normal bridge inspection, we won't do this, but after the uh, schedule inspection or some other regular inspection, if we notice that kind of deficiency, so we have to request the inspecting team for a special inspection. 
all these are all a type for bridge inspection and not only one inspection type is used for bridge inspection we have to combine some types of inspection for inspecting a bridge and for the check you inspection there are some defined interval for inspection so this is uh, the inspection interval reference from Ashu manual for the fracture critical member inspection the standard interval for inspection is 24 months and cannot be a standard for the routine inspection standard interval should be 24 months and can be a standard up to 48 months and for underwater inspection the standard interval is 16 months and can be extended to 72 months. Now I will talk about the duty of inspection team. For the bridge inspector, uh, first we have to plan the inspection and then we need to prepare for inspection. After all of the need to perform inspe inspection, why inspecting the bridge? We need to identify anything that may affect load capacity of the bridge. And of course, we have to prepare the report about inspecting. And if there is critical finding that can affect the load capacity of the bridge, we need to take intermediate action for that. Uh, I will test step by step for the bridge inspection procedure. Uh, first of all, bridge inspector have to determine in advance all these four types. What inspection type should we do for inspection of a bridge? It depends on the type of bridge and size, etc., and uh, depends on the uh, previous inspection report also and who were involved in this inspection team how many numbers we may need we need to determine this and which activities will be required and we need to decide when this bridge will be inspect also after determining all these four facts we have to review the brief file at that time the inspecting inspection team members have to review or design plans and aspect drawing. So aspect drawing is also important. As you know, when we design and plans a structure, so we see the ground condition, but sometimes even if we see the ground condition, when we are carrying out the construction, we have some difficulty to process according to the design plan. So we need to change some structure plan and design plan. So we need to prepare aspect plan drawing also. So it is important to review the aspect drawing also. And if the bridge we inspected have the previous inspection reports, maintenance and repair reports and rehabilitation and retrofit plan, we need to review that also. In addition, hydraulic and geotechnical data, roadway utility, and right of way plan, etc., have to be reviewed before going to the inspection. So, after reviewing all necessary documents, we need to identify components and elements as shown in this figure. So, we need to do this because, so we need to uh, clear which part we have to examine. And in report writing also, we can reference the identification system. For example, uh, the crack of five centimeter was found in concrete deck from apartment one in, from five meter, from apartment one in span one like that, we can write TTX location and refer the identification 
element. So it is necessary. So after identifying the elements, we need to deploy the instruction sequence. So normally we begin with gag and superstructure and then proceed to substructure. After that, we may need to see the chain A and X property. So while considering developing an instruction sequence, some factors are needed to consider. They include what type of bridge we have to is a mine. It's a track fix or suspension bridge or a uh, bailey bridge. We need to consider that. And is the bridge is large or is complex structure or is simple one? This also need to consider for the developing inspection sequence and overall condition and condition of bridge components. These two facts we can get from previous bridge inspection report. And other size, special site consideration are also taken into account in developing in, inspection sequence. This is an example of inspection sequence. First, you will inspect the, the roadway element, light approach roads, traffic sa safety feature, etc. And then we will uh, inspect the deck element inspection joint, sidewalk and railing, etc., and then move for superstructure elements, and then go down for substructure element, and the lux channel and waterway elements, such as channel profile and alignment, and channel embankment condition, etc. One more thing need to prepare is, Organizing notes form and sketch what is necessary for the inspection work. We have to prepare blank forms and typical sketch in advance so as to eliminate unnecessary fee work. One more important thing is arranging temporary traffic control. Because you know, truck bridges are uh, on the road. Way. So if we close and inspect the bridge, so some motorists has problem and we need to arrange for temporary traffic control. For that, we have to check and follow existing standard. So actually I take all theory background reference from UX Department of Transportation and so for them also, uh, if the state is different, the existing standards are different. So need to check and follow the existing standard. Of course, your country and our country will have different, may have different standards also. And need to assess the impact check you. And because you know, if we need to inspect the bridge in the crowded area, so it will impact the public more. So we have to, sometimes we need to ask the permission from authorized person also. So traffic safety is a high priority for public. So we have to prepare some important things like appropriate signs, using appropriate signs and divide for temporary traffic control in heavy traffic, ex little ex possible. And while guiding the motorics also, it should be clear and positive manner and uh, need to inspect the bikes regularly. To do all these things, the responsible person should have adequate training. So before go for the site work, this responsible person should train thoroughly. So the next one is organizing tools and equipment. We have to use different tools for different tasks. Uh, for example, one can kicks to open the gates or hut. Important thing is we have to choose right tool for right job.
So in addition to all these preparation, we need to consider special condition. So the first one is time requirement. So how we have to consider how long it will take to inspect a specific bricks. It depends on overall condition of the bridge, uh, which we have to see from previous inspection report and peak travel time restriction is also important because as I have already told, if we have inspect a bridge in crowded area, um, it is not convenient for the public. So we have to restrict the time, maybe from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., which is not as crowded as other time you share. And another one is set up time. We have to set up time when we have to do what task. A uh, for example, bridging effort, it, is, it may need it several days before inspector arrive there inspection site. Otherwise, it will waste time or inspector and cannot do anything if we have to wait the bridging only when we arrive the site. And daily set up time based on the task of that day and we need to set up and method of SF, we have to use ladder or crane or uh, something like that. So we have to prepare all these. And so we have to prepare for the bad weather condition also. The weather shown in, like the weather shown in this slide, we cannot climb and inspect the bridge. So, and the rules also prohibited to climb the bridge at that condition. And of course, safety precaution, it's important to prepare. After preparing all these necessary tasks, we will perform the inspection according to the sequence we have determined. For example, facts, we will inspect the approach roadway and then deck element and safety features. And then we will inspect the superstructure and inspect the substructure. And it is needed to check the bearing also. And finally, we will check the waterway. While we inspecting all these elements, we need to identify any deficiency we found in these elements. Uh, like corrosion, cracking, splitting, connection slippage, overstrack, collision damage, etc., and need to report immediately the critical finding. So we have to take note of all these inspection for the bridge report and some simply some. Sem Simplex, we need to take measurement and it, is, it will be more clear to understand if we don't sketch and we can take photographs even in video for clear understanding of the damages or deficiency. So in performing inspection, we have to use three inspection methods, visual, physical, and advanced. Visual inspection is the primary method and usually sufficient for majority of bridge inspection and evaluation. But sometimes it is not enough to inspect the bridge only visually. So we have to move for physical inspection. It may include measuring, cleaning, hammer sounding and bobbing. So sometimes even the physical inspection is not enough for some special cakes and we have to move for advanced inspection. This type of in, in, inspection uh, may need additional testing for specific deficiency like ribbon testing or ultrasonic wave detection, etc. And for doing 
this type of inspection, additional training and expert may be required. So after inspecting the whole bridge and all elements, we have to prepare the report, the business activity for reporting X, documenting or inspecting finding, including description, photos, and sketch. Uh, as I have already mentioned, we cannot just write, it is safe to use or it is dangerous, not safe to use. We should have right detailed description with the help of photos and that's the sketch. And we need to identify potential critical findings like uh, sectional corrosion or et cetera that can affect load capacity and based on that critical finding we have to recommend what action we have to take and one more thing is completing agent reform it depends on your agency so if we have found the critical finding it is important to take inter intermediate action for that finding so first of all, we have to report that, immediately report that critical deficiency to the authorized department of person. And then we have to separate the emergency notification to public as well as to the public. So for example, uh, low restriction category or it is not safe and we have to repair like that. And meanwhile, we need to evaluate the deficiency rapidly and implement the corrective or protective action for that deficiency. Uh, it's not enough only to do that. We have to track the system to ensure a ticket follow up also. And for the similar bridge also, provision for identifying and follow up inspection should be carried out. So that's all are the procedure and duties for the inspection teams. So, so I want to add component rating for the bridge inspection. So we can rate the component good, fair, and poor condition. If the component is limited to minor problem, we can rate exact good and if the components have minor deterioration, section loss, falling, cracking, or other deficiency, but it cannot affect the structural capacity, we can rate it as fair. And if this deficiency can affect the structural cap capacity, we can rate it as poor. So could you please rate some components photo I show? Good, fair, or poor, you can type in the chat. Ah, before that, I want to tell that this also. So, then for previously, I mentioned good, fair, and poor is the general rating, and we can use the number rating as shown in this slide also. So, Please start rating for the component. How to think what is the appropriate condition for this component? It's good. So it's good one. But I cannot see the chat box. Ah, here. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Of course, it's good. And how about the next one? How would you rate this? Fair. Poor, poor. So I write text as poor 
because you see here, section not where be seen and it will be more serious later. So and this one, Fair, fair, okay. Right, thank you for your participation. So now I will move to the Dami survey of Kumamoto Akwe. So first of all, I'd like to briefly summarize 2016 Kumamoto Akwe. Uh, during 2016, April, Kumamoto region suffered so a series of earthquakes is start from 14 April with intensity of 6.5 and it was the full shot. And after that, the main shot occurred on April 16 with magnitude of 7.3. Within two days, more than 140 aftershocks occur in Kumamoto and uh, with at least 11 with intensity 4.5 and with one more than intensity 6.4. So due to this earthquake, uh, 40 bridge checks are affected severely among 3,000 bridge checks and other 70 bridge checks are also found in damaged condition. Jia Chushu Shinkansen has been suspended due to damage of bridge on to show expressway also. Uh, uh, as far as I know, after full shot, it means after 14 April, uh, our sensei, our teachers went to the bridge and checked and they found that most of the bridge fear were not found in damaged condition. But after the main shot, most of the bridge, many of the bridge were severely damaged. So actually here you cannot see any bridge because that also bridge was completely collapsed due to a huge landslide. So here your first bridge also completely collapsed during the earthquake. This Hatanaka Daiichi bridge was immediately demolished due to uh, the damage at the top of the pier. Yokoe Bridge is in Yasushilo Prefecture. Uh, the, stair, the bridge there was detached from the main structure due to the settlement of the pier. Uh, this is Okirata Bridge. So you can see the relative displacement. It's 70 centimeter large and it's displaced in transfer direction. In this bridge also the bridge prevention cables were fallen down action in this figure and the bridge cutter were fallen off from the rubber bearing. Here you can see more clearly. So this is the expansion joint. So it's damaged severely and accurately uh, the deck was set it down. So now I will tell about the damage survey of Tawalayaman Bridge uh, with the uh, inspection sequence and the preparation work. So first of all, I like to show the location of Tawalayama Bridge. It's secured very near to at the fourth line, so its damage was CVX. So it is the three span car bridge with a total length of 140 meter and maximum span length of 61.5 meter and width of 8.5 meter. Its set structure consists of inverted T type apartment, overhand pier, and foundation consists of caisson part. So here you can see the identification of elements 
A1, P1, P2, A2, and uh, actually we have to, it's better we identify the Kara also, for example, G1, G2, and G3. But here I didn't identify and I use the Kara between A1 and P1. So, and the site also mentioned, this is the plan and section view of Tawalayamana Press. All these are the preliminary work we need to prepare for investigation the site. So first of all, we, we inspect the approach road and dead condition. So here you can see it's damaged severely due to earthquake. And then we were uh, here. The bridge handway was the phone. It's due to compression forks from both sides. So it's complex like that. And we inspect the abutment where. So here you can see the road embankment was collapsed and the apartment was exposed. So this is from outside and when we see the inside, you can see the foundation was exposed and severely damaged. Also, some cracks are here. And we expect the bearing. So maybe you can see bearing are swaying due to seismic force. Here you can see more clearly. So this is A2 apartment. Uh, the bridge deck was set down 53 centimeter. And this apartment moved about 80 centimeter towards the Takamoli side. So at P2, PR, the rubber bearing was completely fallen down to the ground. You see that one. That one is also moving even though it's completely fallen down. And there were many cracks which can affect their load capacity. Uh, the gutter between A1 and P1 the phone severely, especially the lower left, remember. The main car G3 also, the phone. So this is the overall deformation of Tawalayamana Bridge. So this, ends, this takes me at the end of my presentation. Thank you all for your participation. Is there any questions and comments? Thank you, Professor Mia, for your inspiring presentation. It's giving us so much insight and knowledge about the bridge expansion. It's very detailed. Well, thank you. Well, for all the participants, uh, you may send your uh, your question in this chat room, and uh, Professor Mia. We already have one question for, for Mr. Pedro Zaladi. Okay. Would yeah, you... I will ask unnecessary what I mean. We have to do a uh, to review all the document and all necessary what I mean. So if you don't review the previous uh, inspection report and you just found the Damage, let's say deficiency condition only when you arrive the site and that may need for specific uh, special inspecting. So you have to arrange for that at the site and it's an unnecessary one. If you review the previous report thoroughly and you know that condition in advance, you can arrange before. Is that clear? Yes, thank you, thank you.
So actually, it. Thank you. Maybe I shouldn't say an unnecessary word. It's a necessary word, but it can be done before going to the site. XX may be a week of time if I have to work at the site. Thank you. Thank you for the answer, Professor Mia. Uh, that's a my yeah. uh, that's a second question come from me. Okay. I would like to know that is there any other parameter to be considered, like uh, maybe fifty years flow, perhaps, in spite of yeah. the maybe earthquake of and course, weather. Of course, we can use software also. Uh, in my dissertation concerning Tawala Yamana Bridge, uh, I use uppercut software uh, mm. concerning the rubber bearing and the lower lip tremper and how it affect and so of course you can use recent condition you have designed it up that when you yeah. inspect the bridge and you suspect the load capacity of the bridge is are uh, reduced by such kind of damage. You can redesign and reanalyze by uh, adding the reduced capacity and how it would be happen in future and how it would be uh, asymmetric. You can actually uh, asymmetric. You want to uh, consider for the 15 years, at maybe extra 10 period, I think, like that, you can consider and imagine that also. Thank you, Professor Mia. I never imagined that we can redesign the bridge. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And for the next question, it's from Nova Navilion. Ah, it's, yeah. Is there uh, any the possibility? The Kumamoto Bridge is mainly caused by actually, uh, I didn't show you the damage mechanism. Wait, I, I will show you the damage mechanism and why it's okay. So this takes the positive damage mechanism of the Tawala Yamana Bridge. So actually we uh, imagine that the bridge, uh, according to the earthquake letter force, the bridge was pushed in this direction and also compressed from both sides. And so it rubber bearing and sway and X I show in PR do some rubber bearing where uh, completely fallen down, X take a part and uh, apart the bridge and cause the crack in that bridge. So this is the positive damage mechanism of the main car. And maybe you can see like that. So inward rotation is there also. So that's inward rotation also causes the positive crack in the PR XYX in bridge deck also. Okay. 
Thank you, Professor Mia. Is it uh, answered the question? The inspection okay. form at the bridge had suffered severe condition. Ah, the next step is to retrofit that bridge. So when I was there, they are uh, replacing the and retrofitting the other parts. And until I came back, they have not finished their retrofitting and repairing projects. But now I think it's in normal condition and we can reuse the bridge. So as I have to our facts, we need to define the critical findings and then we have to evaluate that. Okay, I will show you. These are the steps to do after finding the critical damages. So we need to report, we need to notify public and the public and need to evaluate the deficiency and implementation of corrective or, or protective actions. These are the things after finding the critical condition. Can you see my slide? Yes, Professor Nia. Okay. Thank you for the answer and explanation. So is there any other participant or maybe they could raise hand to, so that the host can unmute and they can directly yeah. Ask the question. Yeah, if you have uh, any more questions and we don't have time now, you can send me to me and I will try to answer your question. Uh, okay, Professor Mia. Yeah. Uh, we came out with one question. One more question. What that uh, from the understanding assessment for this Ah, usually after finishing the retrofit plan, uh, sometimes we need to do the low tax and uh, we need to check whether the retrofit plan carry out according to our instruction or not, we have to do that. Mm. Thank you, Professor Mia. Uh, Professor Mia, I think we, we skip one question. Okay. And uh, it's from um, no fun. Ah, okay, okay. If there is any is there possibility, possibility to, to not damage, damage it, bridge, bridge. if it has fair damage, if it has fair damage, we don't need to demolish the bridge. We can prepare retrofit plan and, and we can rehabilitation, do the rehabilitation for that bridge for the further use. Uh, and you know, in Japan, the bridge I showed, they demolished that bridge immediately. But in our country, even if we cannot use the bridge anymore, we just close that bridge and fit new bridge. We rarely demolish the old bridge. So because you know, the demolition costs is high also. Yes, Professor. 
And uh, there's one question that come from participant and yeah. they come uh, in Indonesian, so I will translate to you. So okay. he asked that if we have to do inspection and the failure is in the underwater, in the, we in the foundation of the bridge. Excuse me, what can method, you repeat again? Okay? Yeah. yeah. If there is a failure and the foundation of the bridge is like an underwater there, inspection. There foundation of the bridge our uh, collision of the bridge okay collision, yeah in uh, and the failure is in underwater is it mm. possible to still um yeah with to new still technology repair to and not demolish the bridge is there possible yeah, yeah, it's possible with new technologies now a day mm. Yeah, so so they can instantly replace a pile to another new one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Professor Mia. Okay, uh, maybe uh, we still have uh, plenty of time. Maybe is there any question from another audience? Okay, um, maybe it's us, and they still think about that. And uh, maybe they have an alternative if they would like to ask the question more technical in person, Professor Mia would like to answer via email. Is that okay, yeah. Professor Mia? Thank you for your kindness. So, thank you. Um, Thank you for your inspiring uh, webinar. It's uh, for our new knowledge, for especially for very detailed expansion bridge. So, who is joining for this guest lecture? Um, thank you for Professor, Professor Mia once again. Um, for maybe for Mr. Ferdows to have a closing statement to close this. Okay. Thank you very much for this lecture. Time is your. Thank you very much, Prof. Mia, for today's lecture. We believe your expertise in bridge inspection make us understand that bridge inspection is not simple activity. We have checked any uh, many items that yeah it's complex. So yeah, we learn a lot from you today. Thank you very much. Oh, hi. Arigato gozaimasu, Antoni. Arigato gozaimasu. We don't know you today. Arigato. Okay. Uh, well, for uh, before I close this uh, guest lecture today, uh, please for all of the participants turn on your camera so we can capture the screen together. There is a thirty-eight participant from around Indonesia. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, have your. Well, May I have your you? best smile. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. Okay, for the now for the next page, have your best smile. One, two, three. Okay, thank you for all the participants. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for all the participants, please. Uh, and don't forget to fill the person list form that we already shared in the chat room uh, for for any uh, any suggestion and feedback for our or improve for the next guest lecture. Well, uh, thank for your attention. I will let close this was this this lecture and see you for the next guest lecture good morning this is good and the next guest lecture